We're on the road to revolution, folks, and wow. This show, I cannot put it into words on how bad this show was. Oh boy, this is this was one of the worst dynamite episodes in this show's long history or, or short history. Yeah, with that intro, what's going on guys? It's Boss with Me Six here. I'm doing my dynamite review from uh Phoenix, Arizona, and yeah, this was not a good episode. Like, besides one segment and one segment alone. This episode was a cluster and a half. We're on the road to revolution, and it's only a couple weeks away, and I'm I'm out to it all. There's like only four matches announced, so this may be a short card because granted with the main event, which being a uh, um, 60 man Iron Man match, I understand that. This was terrible. This was a horrible episode of Dynamite, and I cannot believe that this was allowed to be on television. Like, 90% of this could have been on Rampage, or on Dark Elevation, or even Dark to a lesser extent, and nothing would have changed. I do apologize for my hair, because floofiness. Someone made it worse. Speaking of worse, I don't know what the hell happened with the show, so... Yeah, well, let's kick off with the opening match. Wheeler Yuta versus Orange Cassidy for the All Elected Championship, and I am immediately tuned out of the show. Look, Cassidy is a good worker. This gimmick is atrociously bad. It is so terrible. It is absolutely horrible. It is stupid. Yuta is fine in the ring. I did not give a flying frick about this match. Like, this match. They try to tell a story where Yuta's going to like a darker side. He's getting more violent. He's being more aggressive because Claudio slapped him. But the problem is, is that I do not care about this Orange Cassidy gimmick. And they're trying to, excuse me, they try to make him all serious and all this stuff. And he's not putting the hands in the pockets. That doesn't make him any less more interesting. That makes him even more stupid than his gimmick already is. This was a not that great of a match. This match took up 20 pissing minutes. Oh, sweet God Almighty, sweet Lord Almighty in the heavens above. This match was not good. I'm sorry, I did not care about this match. One second. Cassidy won. Life moves on. So, Rene Uno and Hangman are backstage. Uno talking about his match with Moxley. He talks about how dangerous Moxley is, but he is not ready for evil Uno. Okay, then. Ricky Starks comes down. And he has an open challenge for anyone to revolution. Here comes Jericho to, to leech off the spotlight from uh, any up-and-coming talent. And he says, well, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get in our match with me by saying I'm done with you and all that stuff. And... All of a sudden, Peter Avalon shows up, and Chris Jericho hits the juice effect. Thanks for coming, Avalon. We barely knew you. The Jericho gets in the ring, and he says, I can beat you. I can beat you without J uh, the Jassel Society. And he grabs a contract. He says, unfortunately, I don't have a pen. But Ricky says, I do. The Jericho signs it. And Ricky has, like, a goofy smirk on his face. They have completely watered down Ricky Starks. They have completely devalued him to a point where it feels like he's not even important anymore. Which sucks. I love Starks. I really, really, really do. He's charismatic. He's got that personality. He's got he's got the whole package, basically. But you're putting him with Chris Jericho, someone that is leeching off of every young talent he can possibly have. I just beyond care. You're not making me care about Ricky Starks. That is a sin, AEW. Ultimate sin. Not the Ozzy Osbourne album. So multiple teams talk about the Battle Royal. I'm going to have that mess here in a minute. So Big Bill, Lee Moriarty, but still could come down. And uh, they're telling you Clint Billy Gunn. Max Gunn's a pretty good lines. Uh, Max did say, Yo, Bill, your girl just texted me. She said you're S-A-W-F. T. That was funny. 
That was funny. I will admit, I did laugh at that. And then the match happened. Moriarty's good. He's a, he's a solid worker in the ring. Big Bill is just a big guy and nothing more, nothing less. He's in shape. Cool. That doesn't make him any more boring. And Stokely, they brought a child to work day, so... Yeah, there you go. The guns appeared on stage, they beat down Billy, and they acclaimed to win. Cool. So then Tony is on the stage, and then Christian Cage comes out, and then all of a sudden, Jungle Boy Jack Perry attacks him. He gets some chairs, thinking about doing a concerto, but he hesitates too long, gets hit with a little blow, and then Cage is just smacking Perry's face, and Perry is bleeding. So there you go. We're gonna finally gonna have that match for Revolution. A match, the feud that should have ended a long time ago, but we can't have nice things in AEW, apparently. So, we're gonna recap the Wardlow interviews. I got Miles match with Joe. They're having their match at uh, Revolution. Sky Blue took on Soraya. Soraya, good old Slick and next Soraya with Tony Starman. Oh, sweet Christ. This was bad. This was really, really bad. S somehow, Soraya, Soraya got worse in the ring than she was. Like, that match against Britt Baker, I thought was bad enough and was an ultimate piss break match. This was by far the worst defender, and this is only her second match in the company. Dear God, the, that, women's, that women's division's all been... It's, it's been doomed from the start, but it's gotten worse ever since. And they're trying to build up new stars. Sky Blue is beautiful, don't get me wrong. She has talent. She's solid in the ring. She's not great. She's going to get there. Soraya, get her out of the ring. She is horrible. She has regressed terribly. I get it. You haven't been in the ring for that long. You haven't been in the ring in that many years. But CM Punk... Had been in the ring in almost 10 years, and he did way better than Soraya did in his first wrestling match back in 2021. How the hell do you do that? So yeah, Storm kept interfering because you have to make Tony Storm look incompetent. Why did they make Aubrey look stupid? Jenny Wakosha, why did they make Aubrey look stupid? I seriously don't get that, folks. I really do not. So, Soraya won with her submission. I don't even remember what the hell it was called. And then, <clears throat> uh, Baker and Hater come down to chase off uh, Storm and Soraya. And then Ruby shows up. And we're getting a triple threat. <laughs> we're getting a triple threat at the pay per view, folks. Ruby, Jamie, and Soraya. I don't blame Ruby for leaving if the rumors are true. Because she does not look, she is legit pissed. And not in a kayfabe way, she looks legit annoyed in that company. I don't blame her. So we get to the only saving grace of the show. Brian Danielson comes down. He talks about MJF. And he said, he was, he's was he been putting my head on the bounty and he hates me. MJF shows up. This was great stuff. He said, everyone I try to look up to as a friend, I always have my back turned, and they always turn their back on me, and I got rejected. And he said, I had a childhood sweetheart, and I wanted to marry her and have kids and have a house under, you know, have a house to live in. But then she rejected me, and the crowd chanting, you deserve that, that was absolutely great. So then... He says that uh, the only thing that I trust is the AEW world title. And he says, I don't like the fact that you have a family and a, you have kids and, you know, you have a house and all that stuff. I hate that you all take it for granted and that's what you're going to do for the world title. And then he talks about uh, Regal and he says, you took the spotlight for me. And then he says, let me talk to your kids. And Brian says, don't talk to my kids or I'll kick the shit out of you. So, MJF talked about his kids, and yet Brian wasn't beating the piss out of him right there and then, which I don't really get in the last because you're just contradicting yourself, Brian. And, God, MJF is so great. He says, Hi, Birdie. Hi, buddy. It's Uncle Max. And he talks about after Revolution, I'll make sure Dad will come home injured. And MJF goes to talk about CTE, and then Brian attacks him, and the security comes down, and it's a big skirmish, a big pull apart, and then MGF tries to leave, but Brian goes for more. This was some great stuff, folks. If you have nothing else to check out the show for, 
check this stuff out. This was great stuff. Only good thing about the show worth noting. And then everything went downhill from here because then we get a recap of MJF and Brian. And we get a Tony Baker and Hater. Haters putting down the putting down a challenge for a triple threat at the pay-per-view. So there you go. Then we get the Revolution Battle Royal. Bear with me with this. There's ten teams. And whoever wins gets to be part of the four-way. I did. I think I only missed one team. I did. I didn't get the name of the team because they were all at ringside and they all went in at the same time. So here's the teams: Dark Order consisting of um, Alex Reynolds and John Silver. You have Top Flight: Dante and Darius Martin, Lucha Bros: Ray Phoenix and Pentagon Jr., Butcher and Blade, Best Friends, uh, Chuck Taylor and Trent. You also have the TNA Rejects, as I call them, which was Jarrett and Lethal. Uh, Roosh and Vance 2.0, which was Parker and Menard. The Varsity and the Varsity Athletes of Nice and Woods. And Davari was in there, too, for some reason, even though it was supposed to be two teams, not three. But I certainly digress. And there was another team I didn't really catch. I didn't really pay attention because this match was a complete mess. And it was overbooked as hell, too. So I'm just going to go through the eliminations. Uh, well, before that... Mark Briscoe shows up out of nowhere, and he goes after Sterling, and he brawls with Woods. The varsity athletes get eliminated. Blake gets eliminated. Reynolds gets eliminated. Vance gets tossed out. Then Penta goes as well. Roost then gets thrown out. Silver gets eliminated. 2.0 get it. And this is where everything, this match was already off the rails. This is where everything just went off the rails and down to a cliff in the Grand Canyon, in all honesty. So 2.0 get in. They were going to eliminate uh, Best Friends. They think they did. Dan Housen gets in. He gets thrown out. And then 2.0 get eliminated. And then shortly, at, shortly thereafter, Chuck Taylor gets eliminated. Oh. God. I question why this company exists most of the time. Or half the time, in all honesty. The Jared Brawls with Trent. Dante get, then gets thrown out. Then Butcher gets eliminated. And then Phoenix gets eliminated. So now it's down to Lethal Dutt against uh, Trent. So the big tall mofo, a.k.a. Satnam Singh, he, he assists your Lethal. And then they try to eliminate Trent. But due to some nonsense chicanery, Trent is still in because of Cassidy. And then Lethal gets eliminated. And then Singh assists again, the stroke, and the TNA rejects win. Oh, if you want to see one of the worst battle royals in a dog's age, then look no further than this. This was a complete cluster, and not in a fun way. This was just a mess. Instead of doing a battle royal, how about this? How about you have, I don't know, an elimination match? You have the top teams of your entire tag division, battle out to see who's the best and who's going to be in a triple threat or a fatal four-way at the pay-per-view. I'm losing my voice and I'm losing my insanity watching the show. God, the show was bad. <sighs> God. So we get a House of Black vignette. They talk about the elite and going after the trio's tag titles. You know the titles that haven't really mean anything ever since the, the concept of it got mentioned? Cool. The Renee and Connor backstage. Tony Khan has a major announcement. Here's Adam Cole to set up the announcement. Well, did Tony Khan even know where he was at? In all honesty, I'm legit concerned for him. Cole says there's, there's going to be a new show. It's called All AEW All Access, which is basically three, the third hour reality. It's a show that's going to happen. And it's like a reality show or something like that. Like, behind the scenes. Cool. We need more worth, worthless programming for AEW. Seriously, you're making it, you're making WWE's reality shows look great by comparison. And Cole says he's going to be returning to... He's going to be returning on the show that's going to happen before the All Access show. So, cool. Cole's returning. That's good. We get a rampage run down. That show doesn't look that great. Then the teeny rejects are backstage. And then the guns show up. 
and they kind of have tension with them for some reason. Okay. Dynamite Rundown. Then we get a Revolution Rundown. That card does not look good. Besides the main event, that card does not look good at all. Mox vs. Uno. This is the main event of your two-hour wrestling show. That goes to show you how badly paced the show is. This match lasted like maybe ten minutes, excluding commercial breaks. Like, this maybe went about six. Look, Uno is not bad in the ring. He's actually kind of solid for a big guy. This felt like a dark match, or even to a lesser extent, if I want to be at least positive, I want to be nice, at least the Rampage match. This does not need a main event of Dynamite, for God's sake. My team is being more heelish. Um, Uno was bleeding at one point. It looked like he bladed hard. And we get a Bulldog choke. And blood was legit squirting out of Uno's head, so Moxie was legit squeezing, like, Uno's head to a point where legit blood was gushing out. So, that looked b brutal, but it kind of looked cool at the same time. So, Moxley wins. Moxley refuses to let go. Then, Reynolds and Silver come down. Claudio and Mueller show up. And they brawl. Then, Heyman comes down with some weird entrance theme. I do not know what the hell that was. And the theme sounded cool, but... It was either someone's theme or Hangman's got a new theme, which I don't know why because I think his current theme works for him. He gets, he has barbed wire wrapped around his hand. He punches Moxley and the Moxley's bleeding and the show just basically goes to hell and back. This show, besides the MJF and Brian stuff, show is terrible. One of the worst time nights I've ever seen. This was somehow one, worse than one of the pandemic episodes. Because at least that had an excuse because there was no crowds. This was horrible. This was a terrible, terrible episode of Dynamite. And I don't think I was the only one that hated it. So yeah. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I'm going to do my old outro. Make sure you guys leave a like, leave a comment, tap that big red subscribe button, and tap the little bell for more notifications so when I upload, you will be notified. And most importantly, join the herd. I'll talk to you guys next video. Peace out.